and we back today i'm accepting a challenge from the comment section first of all shout out to the homie um his username is crying because i'm a Cavs fan you know which is weird because the Cavs have been one of the surprising teams this season you know what i'm saying things are okay in cleveland at least in my opinion i mean you would know better than me because you're an actual fan his profile picture is kyrie irvin lebron and kevin love all with the crying jordan face emoji so that's something. Anyway, my boy says, hey, Kenny, I got a great challenge for you. The seven wonders of the world rebuilding challenge. I know that. OK, OK, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to sound real stupid here. I know the the seven wonders of the world is a real thing, but I'm going to keep it a buck with you. I literally have no idea what they consist of. I know they're like things around the earth that we can't explain, but I don't know what any of them are. That's that's as deep as my knowledge go about the seven wonders of the world. So. We learning something today. Yes, I'm gonna be rebuilding a team, dealing with the seven wonders, but I'm also gonna look these things up and see what the heck they're about. Be sure to leave a like, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We're on the road to one million. We like what, half a, I don't know how many away. 50,000 away from a million subscribers. So hit that subscribe button. And if you're a fan of geography, because at the end of the day, the seven wonders of the world is something geographical. I think that's the word. Hey, I uploaded the video on my second channel. Um, me playing GeoGuessr. So if that sounds interesting, hit that link in the description. My guy says fantasy draft and play with the Ra Raptors because they're international. So I will. I selected every team so we won't have any untouchables. Oh, I forgot to turn off. I forgot to turn off fantasy draft. You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll be back. Before we get into it in the description, there's a link to our Flick group. It's an app. It's free. Uh, we got a bunch of NBA fans in there to just talk about basketball. So if that sounds interesting to you, click that link and join up. We're close to 9,000 people in there. Okay, so just make sure all of that is right and we can get into it. Select every team and we're going to be the Toronto Raptors. And we don't have a top five pick. I can tell you that much. So this should be a lot of fun, man. The first one says the Great Wall. Oh, I know about the Great Wall. Are we talking about... The Great Wall of China? I thought, okay, this, tell me if I'm stupid and be sh like, tell me the truth. In my mind, the seven wonders of the world were like seven things across the globe that we don't understand or know where they come from. Don't we know where the Great Wall of, anyway, our Toronto Raptors have Steph Curry. That's beautiful. DeAndre Aiden, Keldon Johnson, Evan Fournier, Dwight Howard, Buddy Hield. Okay, this is a solid team. We'll take that. We got Steph Curry. Steph Curry's definitely gonna, gonna fit one of these things. So the main thing about this one is that it is only a seven-man rotation. So typically, we run 10-mans, we run nine-man sometimes, but this one is only seven. So I have to make sure that my seven are eight, eight like super high in stamina because it's a seven-man rotation. And I gotta make sure everybody's really, really good and they fit these standards. See what we can do, man. See what we can do. So we got the Raptors here. Boom. Um, the team wasn't looking too bad, though. The team wasn't looking too bad. When you got Steph Curry, you always got a chance. So, the first one is the Great Wall. A defender of the border. This player must have an 85 perimeter defense and must be under 6'6". Got it. No question. When you Google the Great Wall, um, the first thing that comes up isn't even the Great Wall to China. It's, it's a movie, a Matt Damon movie that I literally have never heard of. But Willem Dafoe is in it, so that's kind of cool. I, I doubt it's a good movie because it looks, just the poster looks bad. But I, I like bad movies. All right, so we need a, a guard, basically, with high perimeter defense, 85. Let's see what we can do. So I'm going to go player finder. I'm going to go down to attributes, perimeter defense. And if it's an, it's an 85, right? Yeah, 85 is like A. So I'm going to go A or better. It's only 10 of them in the entire league. Kawhi, Giannis, Jimmy. Okay, so Drew Holiday, Marcus Smart, uh, Chris Dunn, Matisse Stiebel, they all fit this criteria i think let me just make sure double double check on the perimeter defense that's a 95 so you know what if this is 85 maybe i can go down even more so instead of it being an a i'm gonna say let's get it a b this b work yes a b does work 89 is perfect for jason tatum so um we got a, we got a decent little little pool here minimum height uh, they need to put maximum height maximum height has to be a thing in this game you know what i'm saying when you're doing this this player finding stuff okay so i got a guard um, and I need them to have a high perimeter defense. Like, like I showed y'all earlier, there are no untouchables in this game. They have to be under 6'6". So I can't go get Jalen Brown. They have to be under 6'6". So I see Donovan Mitchell. I see like Malcolm Brogdon, who's got a super high overall now because he's balling this season. Um, these are some, some good players here. These are some good players. So I'm going to immediately go to Donovan Mitchell first because like I said, no untouchables means that I could potentially pull off this trade for him. I'll throw to Keldon, Keldon Johnson. Donovan Mitchell's contract don't kick in until next year. That extension, that big old extension he got, don't kick in until next year. So he's only making $5 million. And maybe that makes it tougher for us. I don't really know. Um, I'm willing to also throw in Jared Vanderbilt. Oh, they don't want Jared Vanderbilt. Okay. 
We're willing to give you Dwight Howard. That's not going to be enough, obviously. But we got picks that ain't worth nothing, bro. Our team ain't even that solid. We got, of course, we got Steph Curry. But, like, other than that, the team kind of... I, I feel like Donovan Mitchell is a guy we can go get. So, I'm going to make everybody their prime position. Because y'all know that just increases the trade value of some of these players. And we're going to we're gonna go in and ask them again a different trade. I think it actually does hurt that Donovan Mitchell is still on this rookie deal, honestly. If I trade find him, they want DeAndre Aiden or Steph Curry. They also give us Russell Westbrook in this trade. Not doing that. This trade don't feel right either. I feel like with DeAndre Aiden's value, I can go get somebody else later down the line. So if I want Donovan Mitchell, I don't even know what our next good package is. Like, we don't really have young players. I already tried my draft picks. So instead of a Donovan Mitchell, how about we go find um malcolm brogdon let's let's try to do the malcolm brogdon one trey finder malcolm brogdon they want dwight howard buddy healed come on that's too easy that's too easy bro i like buddy a lot obviously but uh, that's that's too easy of a trade for me would i rather have sterling brown or bruce brown <laughs> take one of the browns we don't want them it reminds me of the memphis grizzly thing some of y'all remember a couple years ago the memphis Grizzlies were out to do a trade and the other team i forget what team they were trying to make a trade with they wanted dylan brooks but the Grizzlies were trying to give them Marshawn Brooks. <laughs> so the trade got voided. This is, I'm, I'm going to, wait. Or do I want to get Tyrese Halliburton? No, no, no. I don't want to give up a first round pick. I'm going to take Bruce Brown. Because if you watch my other channel, the Kenny For Real channel, you know that I'm a fan of Bruce Brown too. So we have our great wall. A guy that is under 6'6 with high perimeter defense. And let me double check. It's at 85 plus. Malcolm Brogdon. What? Wait a minute. Didn't he? Didn't they say he was a B? What? Okay. All right. We just sold. Um. Okay. I'm going back into. I'm going back into the trenches. Did I mess this up? I need somebody that's a B plus. I guess. Bro, what the heck, bro? I thought Malcolm Brogdon was the guy. Apparently not. Drew Holiday is objectively would be able to fit this challenge. He's an A plus perimeter defender. Bro, I thought I had the guy, and I guess not. All right, I guess I'm instead going to try. I'll, I'll do trade finder Jalen Brown. They won DeAndre Aiden. I don't want to do that. I'll trade finder Drew Holiday. That's probably just Malcolm Brogdon straight up, probably. Yep, they'll give me a pick. I mean, sure, I guess it works long term. We get an extra pick. I could have swore that Malcolm Brogdon was in that criteria. Good thing I double-checked, because if I would have been at the end of the video and then noticed this, then... This video doesn't get published, honestly. Number two is Christ the Redeemer. What is that? The schooling system failed me because I have no idea what this is. Bro, okay. Actually, yes, I do. <laughs> Ain't this in Call of Duty somewhere? Hold on, this is in Call of Duty somewhere. Favela, oh my God. How many of my, how many of my guys know Favela? From Modern Warfare 2. I knew it, I knew it, bro. Here it is. It's on Favela, so I'm not tripping. Um... That's so that's so crazy. Instead of me knowing it for like the the real history behind it, I know it from a video game. Anyway, an immovable statue. This player has to be over 6'10 and have five defensive badges. That's not too bad. Like DeAndre Aiden probably fits this. Oh, never wait. He's only got three, so he doesn't fit this. Um very interesting. Anyway, um, let's go find a center that is 6'10 and have defensive badges. Is this where we we throw in DeAndre Aiden and Twitch Rage? Y'all think is this the spot? Do we go get like Joel Embiid, who I know has at least that many, at least that many badges? I think that's I think that's my plan right now. That's what I kind of want to do. I want to try to go get Joel Embiid. We need to make up 17 million. And guess who makes exactly 17 million? Evan Fournier. Um, he's a valuable asset because yes, we took off all untouchables. So can we do this? I think this is a trade that we could potentially make, man. Do I give up all of this? I guess I don't. That is these our first round picks are trash. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get other people's first round picks because apparently ours is just, we're just the best team in NBA history. Our first round picks are worth nothing. Evan Turner and Jared Vanderbilt for Dorn Finney Smith in the first round pick. That is two stars. Ooh, that's better than our pick. Is Joel Embiid just going to be untouchable? He might end up being, un not, 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 not technically untouchable, but at a 93 overall, even with all the picks that I have, I might not be able to do it. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking we, we potentially go out and get another young player to throw in with DeAndre Aiden and Evan Fournier and some picks, right? So let me see who that, that young player is going to be. Is it Zubac? I guess. Um, Zubac is going to end up being like an 81 overall. 83 overall. Oh my God. He's just, his, his, his value just rocketed. Hold on. Let me show y'all. His value just rocketed. 
Look at his value. Oh my God, that's the pick. That's a, that's that's better than the pick. Y'all got Zubac. Boom. We will also give you DeAndre Aiden. Boom. We need to make up eight million now. So in, instead of Evan Fournier, I'll give you Jakob Po. No, maybe I'll give you Evan Fournier because he is val more valuable. Okay. And now you give us back some bad players. You give us back Dante Exum's contract. Now we fill this up with picks. Our pick, the Suns pick that we picked up. There you go. There you go. There you go. We got we got Joel Embiid, potentially the, the, the superstar MVP player this season. MVP, potentially. He's up there. He's up in the running. Um, so, yeah, Drew Holiday's going back to a shooting guard, and he's almost a 90 as a shooting guard. So, yes. So, we got Steph Curry, Drew Holiday, and our Christ the Redeemer, I think it was, is Joel Embiid. That's a W. At least five defensive badges where he's got 12. Machu Picchu. Actually, I know about that. I'm, I'm not completely dumb. I've, I know what Machu Picchu is. So, an ancient village, the capital of an empire. This player must be 30 years old with a pass IQ of 85. Okay. All right. No big deal. Pass IQ of 85. I mean, honestly, that could end up being our Steph Curry player. Because we were, I was just waiting for something that fits Steph Curry. And this guy is the capital of the empire. And realistically, at 30 plus years old, an R-star player, he is the capital of our team. His pass IQ is a 97, so Steph Curry is our Machu Picchu. Am I saying that right? It's a Kenny video, so probably not. What? How do you say this? Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza. All right, easy. An ancient trading center. This player must have played for at least three teams and have five plus pay playmaking badges. Okay, that's interesting. I feel like the last two um, of this challenge are geared towards point guards. The last guy had to have an 85 plus pass accuracy or pass IQ, and this guy needs five playmaking badges. I mean, we're going to make it happen. Is there any way I can get a small forward or a, a power forward that fits that, though? Because I don't need another point guard. You know what I'm saying? I don't need... Uh, actually, it's a seven-man rotation. I should get a backup. But then again, I have Drew Holiday. Maybe I shouldn't get a backup point guard. I don't know. I don't know. I would prefer that this player is like a power forward or a small forward. So let me go small forward, power forward, and he needs some playmaking. So I'm going to say his playmaking has to be at least a B. Okay, so these are the top guys, obviously. And it says five playmaking badges. DeMar DeRozan, low-key, is now a playmaker. The last couple years in the NBA, he's been an elite-level playmaker. So I'll trade finder him. They want Drew Holiday. That's a dead mission. All right, I, I still want to potentially get him. Um, I think it's not out of the realm of possibility with some picks. DeMar DeRozan, who plays for the 76ers, is an option. I think we go talk to the 76ers about DeMar DeRozan. You know what I'm saying? I think in a video, early 2K21, I traded for DeMar, and he was amazing. So if I can replicate that and get this championship, I think everybody walk out of here happy. We need to make up 15 million. Um, make three more million after Dante Exum. Oh, that's kind of rough. Because remember, this is only seven-man rotation. So I will give you, I'll give you Tyus. And then you give us back Kent Bazemore. Obviously not enough. Look at that trade value and look at our trade value. Not enough. But best believe, I'm willing to throw picks in here. Daniel Gafford, welcome to the team. Oh, Daniel Gafford at a center position? Not on this team. He is a power forward and he's a $1 million contract. Does that help our trade value? Does that help our trade? Possibly. We still need to make up $25 million. So I'm willing to give you Tomas Sadoransky. I'm willing to give up Dante Exum. And Yaka Potal, you give us back, who was it? Kim Bazemore. Oh, now I got to give up an extra player. You got to give him an extra player. You got to give us back Tory Craig. And then we got two picks. Did I do anything? Did I make any progress? I did not make any progress. Okay, I'm going back into the trenches and trying to find this player. Remember, this is only a seven-man rotation too. So I don't want to go too far down because, yeah, I don't even know if that guy exists as a small four power four position, man. So... I think we have we have to go guard here. We have to go guard here and just get a really good backup for the low. Um, and I don't know what that is. What, what's considered the, a low price? Shagos Alexander is is a cheap player. He's not going to be an easy player to trade for, but he's a cheap player at the least. And he's going to fit the requirement. I'll try it. Oh, wow. Did you see that trade value? Because I saw that trade value. Okay. All right. Didn't expect it to be that high. Didn't, did not expect it to be that high. All right. So we'll also give you Daniel Gaffer here. Oh, this is actually a doable trade. Give you a pick. What did you say? Not interested. Okay, Leon Rose. Two picks. Shea is a backup on this team. Or at his 6'6 six, six frame, he can start a small forward. Anyway, that one's done. We got three more. Three more. We're done. Roman Coliseum. A gladiator arena used by the Romans. This player must have been ejected at least once this season. 
with this the season just started so um let me see who's been ejected actually a good amount of players have been ejected i remember the russell westbrook i remember the rondo i remember cal Lowry one twice this season okay i remember one of them i don't remember both of them okay got it um jamal murray hit somebody in the you know what so i remember him getting ejected boogie oh but the, the guy said he must be an 80 plus overall right he said he must be an 80 plus overall so this is what i'm thinking boogie if you make him a power forward is an 80 plus that's my that's my trade option let's go find boogie <laughs> he shouldn't be hard to trade for either because he's a super cheap contract and i think 2k has been kind of ducking this overall a little bit too uh recently oh he's an 80 exactly we could just do this i'm not gonna complain he's exactly an 80 that is exactly what we needed perfect all right all right that was as simple as it gets w the taj mahal i also okay so out of the six so far i know the roman coliseum i know machu picchu i know the great wall and i know the taj mahal so i i'm giving i was giving myself way less credit than what i'm worth i'm not i'm not as dumb as i thought i was all right a palace fit for a king this player must have played on the same team as lebron at some point during their careers that's very interesting okay all right i'm looking for a power forward most likely a power forward that played for lebron but it's also cheap because yeah we have like 28 million oh 28 million dollars of cap space here to trade away hmm. you know it makes about 28 million kevin love makes about 28 million i'm just saying if, if he wants to be our uh, power forward he might he might he needs to be whatever this player is he has to be a power forward so i'm going down this list <laughs> I wish it could be Anthony Davis, but I'm going down this list of looking for players that have played with LeBron. Shea Gears Alexander can't stay on this team. He can't. It says, an ancient trading center. This player must have played for at least three teams and have five playmaking badges. Shea has played for two. Shea has played for two. So Shea has to get traded. Unless I can throw Shea under something else. The last one says a guy with an 85 over 85 three. Shea doesn't have an 85 three, does he? Does he have an 85? Oh my god, if he has an 85 three, we're, we're we're golden. 83. He just missed the cut. He just missed the, he just misses the cut. Okay, we have to trade Shea, bro, and that's gonna be hard to do, and get our value back, cause he's he's so cheap. I need a player that has played for three. Okay, we can't trade you out there. I was gonna say Jimmy Butler. What? A player that has played for three teams. Am I about to go to Spencer Dinwiddie as the player, though? He's got the playmaking badges, and he's played for at least three teams. It says two here, but I promise you he played for the Bulls. I know that it says two. Trust me when I say he played for the Bulls. If you don't believe me, what jersey is this? What jersey is that in this one? I, but, but I don't think it actually counts. Because he only played, um, if I'm not mistaken, he only played Summer League. And then he only played preseason. So, I guess technically it doesn't count. I'm going to accept the Trey Young deal. Um, and I'm going to make Trey Young a shooting guard. And his value should go up a little bit. So, it gives us a different trade piece to play with. I, does it improve us too much? I, I Only time will tell, I guess. There's so many good trades here, bro. But none of them that fit this challenge. None of them fit the challenge. Do I come back to that part of the challenge? And just I'm gonna come back to that part of the challenge and go back to this this Taj Mahal thing. Must have played with LeBron. I'm gonna sign JJ Redick, I guess. I'm gonna sign Robin Lopez, I guess. And then I'm gonna sign Ed Davis, I guess. And then I'm gonna make Robin Lopez and Ed Davis power forwards. Dwight Howard's gonna be. I mean, Dwight Powell's gonna be a power forward. Basically, everybody comes to my team at the center position that turns into a turns to a power forward afterwards because. That's just what we do to players. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's go back to talk to the Denver Nuggets. It might be a possibility that we can pull off a, a deal for Kevin Love. But it, I, I just feel like it's lost value. When you take it into consideration, his contract and stuff. It's, it feels like lost value for sure. Not Trey Young. Anybody but Trey Young. It feels like a uh, lost value for sure. I need to make up $6 million, And that's like her and Gomez. And then they got to give me something back. And then we can throw a pick. Cool. You know? Kevin Love is on the team now. And then the last thing, I need a guy with an 85-3. That's Trey Young. That's Trey Young. And that's the Petra. Trey Young has an 85-3. He better. He 80. Hmm. Huh. Worst three-point shooter than I was giving him credit for. Okay. 85-3. So many players almost make the cut. Like Donovan Mitchell's an 83-3. You know what? I'm going to back to the player finder. 
and I'm gonna say give me somebody with an 85 three or else you know perimeter of three-point shooting has to be at least an a minus who's our options okay obviously all of these dudes he also needs to be really cheap Shea doesn't fit this right yeah he's an 83 so actually we need a dude with a higher higher three-point rating than that we need somebody that's an a it's not that many of them in a, Nick Vucevic. Shout out to Nick Vucevic, bro. Just killing the game from the center position, bro. Could just shoot it from wherever and whenever. Okay. Um, we're not trading Trey Young for Mikel Bridges, but... We could. What are we turning this into? So we, got, we need to get a guy that is an 85-3. We need to get a guy that's played for three different teams and has an eight and, and five playmaking badges those are our last two things okay i have my petra it's going to be jason tatum a player with an 85 plus three point shot he has an 88 that is a deal okay and he's going to run small four for us okay he's already at a small four 2k has updated him and that, that tells you how much i actually played 2k i had no idea they actually updated him okay so we're still missing that last player which is a player that's played for three teams at least and has five playmaking badges Let's make it a guard. Let's make it a guard. Derrick Rose has played for at least three teams in his career. He's got nine playmaking badges. Is this an easy deal? Seven million dollars. He's making seven. We will give you Dorn Finney-Smith. Um, we need to make up three million. D. Rose, can you come get this championship, bro? I will also give you, yeah, Stanley Johnson. I think we got pick. We got a pick. We got D. Rose. Oh my God. Did that take way longer than it should have to make seven trades? Yes, it did. But only a seven-man rotation, Nick Nurse. I don't want to see no Ed Davis, no Sfi Mikhailuk, no JJ Redick minutes at all. Only these dudes. So let me double check to make sure I got everything and fit all the criteria. Wow. Okay, we did it, yo. We did it. We did it. We can start simulating finally. 40 minutes later, we can start simulating. And here we go. Um, starting off pretty solid. We beat the Bulls. Who have Bradley Beal. I forgot we did fantasy draft. I was like, how the heck did the Bulls get Bradley Beal? Um, and we also beat the Celtics. So that's pretty cool. I've, I'm burnt. I'm just going to simulate to the end of the season. Season is wrapped and Luka won MVP. LaMelo, DeJounte Murray, Giannis, Chris Boucher, and Nick Nurse. Which is which is us. You know what I'm saying? We built we built a great team out here, baby. Did Steph Curry make an NBA team? He did not. That is disrespectful. Um, did Drew Holiday make a defensive team? He did. And Joel. All right, so we just got one of the best defensive teams in the league. Low-key, when I was putting this team together, I wasn't even thinking about, like, how they really meshed. I kind of just wanted to fit the challenge. I didn't even think about how well they would mesh. But we won 61 games. Did we have the best defense in the league, though? Because, I mean, to all defensive players, we we allowed them the least amount of points. Our point difference was the highest. So, yeah, we did our thing, man. We did our thing. We didn't... And, sh like, okay, number seven and three-pointers made. I was about to say, where's Steph Curry and his three-pointers? But... Oh, he was a third leading scorer on the team. He wasn't even the guy. It was Jason Tatum and Joel Embiid, which is pretty cool. Derrick Rose off the bench, 15. More than one of our starters, Drew Holiday. Two of our starters. So Derrick Rose should have probably won six man of the year, but they don't be giving no love to our guys. Let's get into it, man. First round, Orlando Magic. This is Luka. This is Luka in the first round. Okay, all right. Are we excited? Are we ready? Game one. Okay. <laughs> Are we excited? Are we ready? Are we excited? Are we ready? No. No. We aren't. We aren't. Come on, bro. We are excited or ready for Luka Doncic in the first. Okay, there it is. That's a big win. That's a big win. All right. Forces game seven, man. Forces game seven. They had a 40-point fourth quarter, but it wasn't enough because those first three didn't matter. Luka struggled. We, we need that. And he fouled out. We need that. Again, one more time. So one more time. Joel Embiid, you better be dominating. I don't know who's guarding you. Who's their center? Yusuf Nurkic is, is a is a big body center, so never mind. But I need my 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 big three to be big three. Oh my god, bro, it's over. Is it? Is it over? Yeah. No, Rig, we're going there, baby. Let's go. A 34-point fourth quarter. Oh my god, the, the the views look amazing here in Toronto. I guess is this Toronto, y'all, or is this um? Are we in Tampa? But no, this is Toronto. All right. Derrick Rose is in the game and not Steph Curry. So that's a little bit scary. Where's my, where's Wardale? Where's Wardale? I need, I need Wardale. Did he foul out? He probably fouled out. Keeping it a bug. He's only got 14 points. Did he foul out? Um, he's got one foul. So why is Derrick Rose in the court right now? Oh, there he is. 
getting off the bench. Nope, that's Kevin Love getting off the bench. We're just going to allow Steph Curry to sit on the bench in the, late in the fourth quarter in Elimination Game 7. Get, get Jason Tatum out the game too, actually. Nope, get him out the game for that. Nope, you don't. Get him out. Nope, we don't need him here. Get him. <laughs> Will you run out of bounds, bro? You run out of... Get him out of here. Get it out of here. All right, let's go. Play some good defense. I would personally, if I was Nick Nurse, I would put Drew Holiday um, on Luka, but that's just me. I'm the general manager. I'm not the coach. So I, what do I know? They're running to double big. Bismack, Biombo, and Jared Allen on the court, on the court together. The, the offense looks disgusting, bro. Oh, the offense looks really bad. And Jason Tatum can't get past Bismack, Biombo. Bismack, Biombo ain't stopped nobody in years. And he's stopping all-star Jason Tatum. That's the end of the game. We lost in the first round to the 8th seed. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. You know, another day at the office, another day at the KLT for Q offices where we lose, we lose to the 8th seed. I'm out of here. I'm, I'm, uh, it's a three point game, but I mean, I feel, I feel very confident saying that this is the, this is the end of it. <sighs> yep. There it is. All right. Luka, 40. Steph Curry wasn't in the... First of all, Steph Curry shot four for 16. But he wasn't in the game. Derrick Rose, was he having a better game? No, not really. Ah, see this way too often. Uh, just getting eliminated by eight seeds. They might go on to win a championship, though. You never really know. I mean, they might go on to win a championship. Yep. They almost did. The Sacramento Kings did, but Chris Middleton is the guy, huh? Chris Middleton, Nick Vucevic, Aaron Gordon? I can't explain it. <laughs> I can't explain it. Hey, as always, bro, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave it a like. I appreciate you watching it all, even though it ended in failure. I got to redeem myself soon. But I'll be back in a couple days. Peace.